mentioned those surveys about journalists and uh, how they're uh, valued uh, by the public. Uh, I guess the public has the same problem we do in uh, the, the, the definition they have about who is a journalist. Uh, to that extent, maybe some people think Billy Bush is a journalist. So I don't take those surveys too personal. <laughs> You're a better man than me. Uh, sir? Yeah, I, uh, I think that the, the whole issue, I think, is if we're going to try and defend the issue, I think it's a good opportunity to create a shield line. I think the Journalist Federation, as well as with lawyers, can actually come up and write up a specific proposal to be able to protect not only journalism, but also the sources and the whistleblowers. Because if you don't protect the whistleblowers, what's the point of protecting journalists? The sources coming from the person who are the whistleblowers. And the people who are really interested in, in getting this, the whistleblower, who is that person who's getting that information? Where did he find out that the contract with a bribe or whatever it mean was taking place? And obviously this whole issue would be breaking up between in the in City Hall, whereby the mayor and the police and the rest of it where have we must have been involved in something much more deeper. Since we already know through the Sharp Enough Commission what was taking place with million dollar, billion dollar contracts. So what exactly was being looked after? What exactly he, this policeman was looking to find out? Whether there were corrupt policemen in the force, we you know something, or there were corrupt mayors or whatever. So the issue is that. Man. I think the issue that uh, I think Mr. Bentley was bringing up is yes, the Supreme Court has passed certain legislations and they made certain definitions. But I think in statutory law, I think you can create your own law. And I think instead of really going back and nitpicking and uh, dicing it and slicing it which way, whatever, whatever, I think is to make sure that you uh, uh, adopt and look at the most progressive legislation in Europe in terms of protecting sources, in terms of protecting journalism, whether it's from the Scandinavian countries or from Northern Europe. Not Britain, obviously, just that Britain has some of the worst laws you can imagine. It's, it's, uh, uh, you know, protecting the aristocracy in the right. You know. But uh, Britain, uh, Scandinavian countries, Belgium, and, uh, and, uh, and Holland, and the rest. The other thing is that it makes what is happening right now in Quebec is very much like what's happening in the middle. Where somebody phones up and says, I know that the mafia is having involved, and you have the Supreme, the, one of the judges blown up in, 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 uh, in Sicily. The same situation with journalists being killed because they have certain secret information and sources being killed. People who had sources in Italy. This is a country which is a democracy. Not as you point out, police states like in Russia with Anna Palkovska. So you're repeating your earlier remarks. Is there a question that you need to direct? But one of the questions as I actually point out is how to create and formulate a particular law which would protect the journalists and the, um, and the, and the whistleblowers. And uh, that is the, the role of, I think, if of the journalists, the newspapers, and the lawyers. And the lawyers' the lawyers' guilt comes up and says, this is what we believe. We're going to adopt a statutory law. No, I, I agree with you that that's certainly uh we have to look at the possibility of adopting a, a shield law, and uh, the association of journalists, the lawyers, uh, the politicians have to have a serious discussion about it. But I'm not terribly optimistic that such a shield law will be eventually adopted by the politicians. I'm not very optimistic. But give it a try. We should give it a try. We've tried in the past. It hasn't worked. But uh, maybe we should put more pressure on the government to adopt such a law. And the associations such as the Federation. Should perhaps uh, investigate that possibility. Awesome. Yeah, I'm Arsene Mamoudi, I'm a truck user. Um, question for uh, Fumian. Uh, la semaine passée, El Trotti a écrit une édition, puis il a écrit que uh, le lien de confiance entre uh, la presse et le service de police de Montréal est maintenant rompu et que vous allez agir en fonction de ces nouveaux paramètres. Uh, concrètement, comment ces relations ont changé ou ont ils changé? Uh, Eric est quelqu'un qui aime bien parler uh, de façon franche et parfois uh, directe, trop directe, mais uh, ce qu'il a dit est vrai. Uh, on, on, on était naïfs et on prenait pour acquis que les, le service de police jouait avec les mêmes règles du jeu. Ça ne veut pas dire qu'on a des relations moins civiles avec eux. On continue à leur parler et il y a beaucoup d'entre eux qui continuent à nous répondre. Euh, ce qui se passe, c'est que quand on parle à nos sources dans le service, on redouble de précautions 
euh, mes collègues qui font ça régulièrement, des gens comme Daniel Renaud, Vincent Lacouche ou d'autres, euh, avaient déjà